Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to watch a video over analyzing the graph of the polynomial function negative 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 10x plus 1. So we're going to analyze the graph of this, i.e. we're going to come up with the graph. And how are we going to come up with the graph? Uh, our final goal here is to graph this guy, to give a rough graph, a rough sketch, if you will, a rough sketch of the graph. And then once we come up with a rough sketch of the graph, then we're going to estimate the zeros. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to start with, and we're going to do it, you can go back and forth between these four bullet points, but today in this video, we're going to, we're going to get to our final result following the order given in this on the, in these bullet points. I we're going to discuss the end behavior first. Then once we have the end behavior, we're going to try to find out what happens between the ends by creating a table of values. And we're going to use our calculator for a table of values. Don't forget, some people have been making errors on finding a table the table of values. Once we have the end behavior, once we have the table of values, then we're going to sketch the graph, rough sketch that is. Once we have the rough sketch, then we're going to estimate these guys that we call the zeros, which are actually the x-intercepts. All right, so step one, discuss the end behavior. Step two, create a table of values. Step three, sketch the graph. Step four, estimate the dig and dog dag on zeros. All right, so let's go step one, end behavior. Well, what do you know? Well, this rascal here has a degree of three. That's odd. The leading coefficient coef for short the leading coefficient is negative 2. That rascal is less than 0. If you look at your notes, what does an odd degree polynomial with the negative leading coefficient tell you? This tells you that this graph starts positive, and this comes right off the notes, folks. Starts positive and ends negative. So that's going to be very important. Starts positive and ends negative. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead right away and give the statements that this implies. Starts positive, ends negative. Why is this? This is because I have an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. So this is what starts positive means. Starts positive means as x goes to negative infinity, the function f of x goes to positive infinity. Ends negative means as x goes to positive infinity, function goes to negative infinity. Now we're going to sketch that on our next graph, but what the heck does that mean? And if you look at this, okay, the graph starts negative positive, see? And it ends negative. And what does this statement here mean? A lot of people are getting confused on this. Rightfully so. This is the first time you've seen this x approaches negative infinity, well, this is your x-axis. This right here is negative infinity. That says as x approaches negative infinity, what happens? The graph goes to positive infinity. The y values go to positive infinity. That's what starts positive means. It's a little bit confusing, but starts positive means it starts over here, and it ends negative, starts positive. Well, that's what it means. And it's going to be up here in quadrant two where the graph starts. And that's where this statement 
means. That means as x goes to negative infinity, and this, I agreed, agreed, this is a tough topic, tough concept. First time you've seen this approaching, this arrow, directional arrow of x. What does this statement mean? Well, this statement means that as x approaches positive infinity, as x gets really big, what's happening to the function values? They're going really small. They're going negative infinity. So we get all of that information from the fact that the degree of the polynomial is odd and the leading coefficient is negative. Next step. Next step is to come up with a table of values. You've got to be very careful here. Okay? And I'm only going to give you... Uh, you won't need many values or many points, but you not, might need more than what you originally think you need. So I'm not going to go through and how you find negative 2. If you put negative 2 in, it's negative 11. You put negative 1 in, it's negative 9. I'm just going to trust, and you're going to need to check yourself, that you know if I have input negative 2 into this, you have an output of 11, negative 11. Like manner, negative 1, negative 9. 0 is easy, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 7 is easy. If you put 1 in, you get negative 4. Plus 10 is 6, plus 1 is 7. But you have to be very careful on the table of values. Keep in mind, you can always pause the video and see if you can't get these values. And, and I would do that. If you're going to take this quiz, make sure you can get these values. Use your scientific calculator. Okay? So now, let's plot these points. And what I would suggest is to scale the x's fairly decent. Might need some more. So I got 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And let's plot the points. I got negative 2, negative 11. And you're just going to scale the y scale. This is your x relative to the other y values. What well, negative 2, I'm at negative 11. Whoa. At negative 2, I'm down here at negative 11. Plot the points in green. And then we can do 5, 10. So you're down here. This is this point, negative 2, negative 11. Let's go negative 1, negative 9. That means it goes up here a little bit, maybe about right there. And then where's the next point? The next point's going to be 0, 1. About right there. The next point is 1, 7. Oh, let's go. This is 5. 1, 7 is going to be about right here. And then 2, negative 3. That's going to be about right here. Okay? And if I connect these dots, somewhere it has to come back down. And it's going to have to cross the x-axis between 1 and 2. And it's going to have to cross the x-axis between negative 1 and 0. Is that the sketch of the polynomial? Well, tell me. Does it continue to go this way? Oh, does it continue to go this way? How do I know? Guess how you know? You look at the... Oh, if you go back to the end behavior, if I go back to the previous slide, which talks about the end behavior, this rascal starts positive and ends negative. The graph I have thus far is starting in negative and ending negative. So, oh, so chances are... I have a correct end over here because this guy, as x goes to positive infinity, is indeed, the outputs, is indeed going to negative infinity, but it's not happening over here. So guess what I might need to do? I might need to check another value because I know it's not going here because of what the end behavior. And the end behavior said that rascal starts positive. 
what's the next most obvious point that I'm going to check? I know it, it's at negative 11 at two. Let's just try negative three. Let's put negative three in. Let's put it into my calculator. Got that, what? Negative three is seven. So what's happening? Oh, so I'm back here at another seven point. Let's go green, dude. I'm gonna erase this because that's not what happened. And now does that follow? Make it curvy. Does that follow the end behavior? Does this guy follow the end behavior that I talked about? It does. And that's a really rough sketch. And I know I got negative three, seven. I got negative two, negative 11. I got negative one, negative nine. I got zero, one. I got one, seven. And two is negative. Now I can estimate the zeros of this graph. Where are the zeros? Where does this graph cross the x-axis? So this particular graph has three x-intercepts, and we're going to estimate those. The first x-intercept, the first zero or x-intercept, we can use that word interchangeable, is where? Between negative three and negative two. The second zero or x-intercept is between Tell me, Billy. Yes, between negative one and zero. The third x intercept. These are estimations is between one and two. And I have a good sketch. My sketch deals with the end behavior. It deals with enough points. I have enough points to match the end behavior, and I can see all of the x-intercepts. Make sure that when you do these problems, you know how to estimate the x-intercepts. Make sure that you know how to determine if it starts positive and ends negative or starts negative and ends positive. This is where you're going to use your notes. Degree odd, leading coefficient negative, star positive and negative. You know the leading coefficient could be positive. These things switch then. And make sure that once you have these statements, that you can make your final directional statements with respect to x increasing or decreasing. Hope this helps you. Catch you later.